So, how many of you have booked your S4? Raise your hand. Not yet? Has it hit the market? No, sir. Not yet? When is it hitting the market? 16 May. Sir, did you know when it was hitting the market? Sir, do you know what S4 is? <laughs> That's innovation. <laughs> Do you know which company the S4 is coming from? Samsung. Did you buy? Did you? Would you have bought Samsung just about uh, three years back? No, so no. no, right? Why are you buying Samsung today? Innovation. Innovation. <laughs> Innovation. What? What would you have? Had your dad said or had your mom said this is the money go and buy? What phone would you have bought two years back? iPhone. Two years back. I'm talking about the market share. I'm talking about the sheer market share. But today, it's it's S4. S3 did come. People did take two S3, but still S4 is the in thing, right? People going to the stores waiting till April end. So, but for all those who didn't get it right, it's April last week. It has been postponed to April last week now. So, what is making them and, and the response? Should I take the mic off or? And the response that these people are getting is Apple is far away. Apple need to launch at 5S and Apple doesn't know when does it launch at 5S. Right? At 6, nobody knows. And there's a story going around Steve Jobs has developed an iPhone 8 before he died, it seems. And he has given the dates before which it cannot be released. Stories. So. <laughs> So what is that? It's all about innovation. innovation. It was Apple, today it's Samsung. You don't know what tomorrow is. Nokia is dangling with a Windows 8. Stuck somewhere here, somewhere there. Not very sure. Nokia Lumia, sometimes they're, they're, they're doing the 820 up, they're trying to bring the 720 up, they're going back to 920. What's the game all about? What's the game all about? Innovation. What's the game changer? Not HR, not marketing. Where is marketing now? If marketing had been so strong, then where is marketing now? Where is HR? If they feel you are architecting the organization, where is HR now? There's only one word. There's only one mantra. Innovate or you are dead. I like that. There's a flash here. I think uh, there's something I, I noted. I forgot. Hmm. Gearing for 2020. Innovate or you are dead. Right? So we live in a constant constant area of paradox. Constant area of paradox. What do you focus on? Sometimes you focus on organization, sometimes you focus on marketing, sometimes you focus on finance. And so so many a times, have you seen how many times the CEOs are getting changed off late? What is the average tenure of a CEO now? Two to three years. Two to three years. Lovely. So confident. <laughs> Two to three years, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. Right? And when the CEO goes, what happens? Everything changes. Right? Suddenly the HR head is bad. Suddenly the marketing head does not work. Suddenly. And the new CEO comes. And then he finds very bright sparks in where whom he has worked with. So you see how fast the whole thing is changing? What is, what is job security? Have anybody of you heard job security? What is it? What is it? That you know that you're on a stable position and that in the coming future you might... What is a stable position? That you're not changing fast enough. Who's not changing fast? Your position. That the whole company is dead. Now that's the paradox. If you're not changing fast, the company is dead. And if you're changing fast, you are dead. In any case, everybody is dead and everybody is doing a merry-go-round. And the companies can survive only when they're innovating fast. Right? So, this is a very interesting situation to be in trust me. Trust me, it's on the living on the brink of life. And previously, all were walking very stably here. Today, we all are living here. We all are living on the brink of life. Now, this is exactly where you're going to think, start thinking HR from. So, if, if organizations are living here, and HR is still thinking of what it was, the old concepts, then you have a problem. Because then you are not helping the organizations to innovate. You are not structuring the organizations well to innovate. 
You are not creating an ecosystem in the organization to innovate. You are not preparing the leaders today to innovate. You are not preparing tomorrow's leaders to innovate. You are not recruiting the right people who will add value today. You are not recruiting the right people who after two years will, value, will deliver value. You are not recruiting people who will deliver value after five years. So basically you are, you are not bringing in eggs which will be of different generations. In a sense, generation is two years. Two years to it. Instead of throwing the policy books and rule books. What you hear won't. What, what you hear won't. Take you there. Take you there. Who said this? I didn't say this. So who said this? <laughs> Marshall Goldsmith, who is the number one coach, who turned around the entire Ford company. He's the coach to Ford CEO. He turned around the entire Ford company, and there are many Wall Street, the picture of Wall Street if you have seen them. So the entire Wall Street company, the Ford, all the CEOs have been coached by him and he's turned around these companies. But what we hear won't get you there. Right? What got you to this business school and the competencies which got you to this business school will not help you to get a good job in the industry. What will help you to get a good job in the industry will not ensure to be successful in the industry. What will ensure to be good success in the industry will not help you in any manner to become a good middle manager. What will make you help to become a good middle manager will in no way help you to become a good leader. And what will make you to help a good leader will in no way make you a good citizen in this country to give back to the society, unfortunately. And therefore, what you are doing in your life cycle, you are constantly, you need to constantly innovate at each and every stage. I was hearing to Sir's story and the way he had completely shifted from one institute to another, each institute was a legend, although you know him much better than what I knew him last 30 minutes. Each institute he has worked is a legend. It has not happened on its own. It may look on its own, but ask him sometime and he will tell you the stories, how it was difficult each time. Correct me, sir, if, if, if I'm wrong, because they look, like, they look like a picture book, but trust me, nothing is a picture book. There are a lot of stories behind each each one. So, so have you, are you, are you creating your life story? Are you working on your stories? Are you directing your stories? Are you scripting your stories? If you're not, then things will not happen. So innovation is at every pace, whether it is your own individual life, whether it is in the organization you work for, or whether it is the profession, marketing, finance, or HR and everything. Though I see a lot of students here who are not from HR, but since today I've been asked to speak about HR, so I'll, I'll focus on HR more. So what is the innovation we are talking about HR? What is the innovation we are talking about HR? I don't agree, I agree with only HR practices remain by and large the same. HR concepts do not remain the same. And the whole pro problem is we are getting stuck up between dualism, between paradox. The paradox between administrative HR and strategic HR. The paradox between business value that is profits, the bottom line and people. People who we bring in, how do we develop people, how do we train people versus business versus profits. The par paradigm where we are stuck is today between past and the future. Past means whenever the HR guys who go, you will find heritage, you will find company culture, you will find value systems. Have you heard of these words? I saw even in your, this thing, there's a good page on value systems, right? Now what happens to this organization after 10 years? The value system will still be there? Were the value systems same up before 10 years? I think so, they will say. No? If I be any, any old staffer from a 5 Five years back, were they the same? I think so. Right? So you will get caught that these are the culture, this is the value system, these are some of the things. Heritage versus future. What is the future demanding? So these paradoxes, administrative versus strategic HR, past versus future, Business versus people, event versus sustenance. Each one is an event. Performance appraisal is an event. Hmm? Any HR activity, recruitment is an event. They're all in isolation. Versus sustenance. That means how do you look at it as an integrated business atmosphere and not look them as each activity? These are all paradoxes you will face. And innovation lies in these paradoxes. How do you address these paradoxes? Innovation is not by its own within HR. 
innovation is not stand alone in HR. In in HR, the innovation will come with align, integrate, and then innovate. If you are not aligning, if you are not integrating, and you are not innovating thereafter, your innovation will become stand alone in HR. I am only talking in context of HR. This is not in context of of technology or anything else. Because in HR, if you are not integrating, if you are not aligning with the organization, if you are not integrating with the organization, and then you need to think about innovation. At the biggest exciting stage of HR has come now. The reason that this is an exciting stage for HR is still now. When did you start? You started with as, as as I think you put it so well. You started with what? You started with administrative HR. You started with administrative HR, and then thereafter we grew to. From administrative HR, we do HR processes. We came to different HR processes, right? There are several books. You find several books you know, on HR processes. And after HR processes, we came to what? Strategic HR, which is the buzzword, right? It's a very big buzzword, strategic HR. But the innovation that's now current, right now, what we are talking is not. Strategic HR also gone beyond strategic HR, and what we're talking about is outside in HR. If you're not outside in, you are not innovating at this moment for HR. Now this will get passed in another two years. Don't expect me to say the same thing after two years. But right now, at this moment, as I stand, and I've given you the global knowledge, I can assure you, when you're hearing this, you're hearing the latest. The book is not yet out in the market. The HR gurus are still not out in the market, or maybe the US market has released the books. Is outside in. I was I, I I was lucky, in fact, to to hear it from the horse's mouth. But the whole concept today is getting integrated to outside in. And what is up? What is outside in all about? Outside in all about is about the business trends. What is the business trend? What is required by the business? And then work backward inside. Now that becomes very important. That becomes very important. But what what generally HR guys do? A B C D. We know this the best. This is in our company. This is how the performance appraisal has been happening in our company. We are a great company, and they are. And we have the excellence in this. And as Sir rightly put it, is all inside out. The CEO comes in. The marketing head comes in. The finance. This is to be done. No, sir, you cannot do this, sir. Last 15 years, sir, the whole performance appraisal is like this, sir. So we have a policy, sir. I will get you the policy book. So you will get a policy book for you, where it cannot be done. What does he say? How it cannot be done. And then you have created 10 enemies also in the process because that one, yeah, it's a pata ni kisne rakha hai. Why don't you fire this guy? Yeah, get a young chap who will young chap. Bol raha young chap. What does he mean? Is Joe? Mera baat sunega. The question is, the question here is, our job has gone beyond that, and this problem we are facing because we have not revised our policies, we have not revised our value system, we are not whole whole way we are not we are not looking at it as outside in. Now the question that comes is, what do you mean by outside in? How are you going to do this outside in? The first thing and first and foremost thing is, if I give you anything that you do, it needs to be reduced to tangible share. If you cannot talk figures, you have no place. HR has no place in the industry if you cannot talk figures. But we HR guys, we take a lot of pride with our right brain activity only. That's a very important thing. But only and don't like to talk figures. We only talk qualitative. Today you cannot afford to talk qualitative. You go to talk figures. And if you go to talk figures, then you go to talk about very concrete figures. Talk customer share. Talk customer share. That's all outside in. Talk. You don't talk about market share. HR cannot help in market share. The HR can help in customer share. What is the difference between customer share and market share? The market share is how much. For example, if Samsung is coming out with S4, then Apple's market share with i5, their market share. You cannot do much. Technology is doing the trick. Even marketing cannot do much. Then comes marketing. First is technology. Then comes marketing. What HR guys can do in innovation is creating, expanding customer share. What is customer share? That means we are already doing business with some person. He has, so for example, 20% of his market is with you. Now you increase the customer share from 20% to 40% by increasing organizational efficiency, by increasing leadership efficiency, by increasing what you deliver, by increasing the innovative stuff that you are doing, so that they move up the service experience. They move up from 20 to 40%. 
That is a lot to do for each other. Instead of throwing the policy books and rule books. Start there. How will you start there? Have lots of conversation with leaders, business leaders. Have lots of conversation with customers. Go out to the field. Go out of the four walls. I've heard many people, why, why are so many girls in HR? Because we felt it is a very, you know, like we don't have to travel much. Sorry, don't look at it that way. Ladies are most welcome. This is a great field for ladies, but no other competencies in a lady, not for not going out. Please go out. Please go out. Travel with your sales folks. Travel with your technology. Go to the technology lab and see what they are doing. See what mindsets, what help do they require. How can you facilitate them to innovate better? Travel with the sales guys to understand what does your end customer want. And therefore, how can that be delivered? How will you increase the service efficiency? And therefore, what is needed to build the organization to produce such kind of leaders, such kind of processes, and such kind of ecosystems. That, that is where the innovation needs to come in. And that is where HR is getting blocked. So understand these people, automatically you'll be able to increase customer share and then measure yourself. Measure yourself, so customer share was this, this is what you have done to the customer share. Right? Architect conversations. Architect conversations between end clients and our sales folks. Architect conversations between different divisions, heads, their people and different conflict management basically between internally when I talk about it. Externally between the customers. How many of you have read the book Crucial Conversation? Or you must have heard about coaching, executive coaching. Get into conversations, architect conversations. We are what we hear. We are what we communicated. We are what we teach our children. Our children are what they hear from us. Right or wrong? Most of your behaviors have been influenced till now by what you have learned from your parents and what have you seen your parents, uncles, aunties to be done. Power of communication is huge. Power of ecosystem is huge. And HR is the architect. HR is not about policies and performance system alone and performance appraisals alone or improvement alone. There's a lot here happening. You can be the person who the CEO will call and trust you that, you know, the two departments, there are issues and I want you to facilitate. Facilitation is evolving as one of the biggest skills. Coaching is involved, evolving as one of the biggest skills. All this in the line of architecting conversations, whether with the end customers or whether it is between departments, between people. Read as much as possible analysts' report, consultants' report, industry reports, read industry magazines. What happens? You come to understand the trends. If you don't understand the industry trend, if you do not understand the market trends, if you do not understand the product trends, where is Coca-Cola today? Where is Nokia today? Do you know that who was Nokia before Nokia? And where was Nokia at one day? Do you know who was Nokia before they got into this? Anybody? Before they got into mobile manufacturing. Do you know anybody? <laughs> yeah? Try. Absolutely. They were trading house. Paper was one of them. They were trading house. Yasek Harida, Waha, Bechdia. Paper was one of the major things. Right? Now, one day somebody said, Itna mobile hai, isko jo hai, aap yaha se, yaha bech dena. And they said that it looks to be an interesting product. Why don't we get into it? Because we have enough money now, we are a cash rich company. That's how they got into it. And you know how they are getting out of it. I mean, they don't want to get out of it. But Right? So, so there is huge stuff happening. If you do not follow the products, where is Infosys now? Where is, I mean, I don't want to blame the companies, but if you really look at these companies where they were 5, 10 years back or 15 years back, and they all, they'll all recover, don't worry. But, but look at them what they are, where they are. We were there. When we grew up, we were, we were, they were our dream companies. I still remember people were, you know, be lying to, to, to put this. Where, where, where are things now? Things are changing fast. So if you do not follow the product change, if you do not follow the product innovations, if you do not follow the market trends, you will have an issue. You will have an issue. And therefore, you will not be able to architect the HR, the ecosystem, internal ecosystem of an organization. Right? So this, this becomes extremely important for you to understand the external ecosystem, the business trends, and thereafter to come down 
to the organization, how are you going to build the organization, how are you going to architect the organization. That becomes extremely important. Coming down to HR processes, you're going to constantly look into the HR processes. You're going to constantly innovate there. When you say innovate, the four basic things will not change. People, performance, what else? Yeah? The work structure, the people, the performance, the work structure, and the reward. Right? This will not change. When I say reward, the entire thing comes in. Like, you know, how will people get? Right from the compensation to reward, what incentivizes it. These are all linked to your old management principles. I'm not getting into the details. You must have studied in your first year. How, you know, motivation theory and all those stuff. So these are four people, performance, reward, and your work systems. So we're going to constantly look into this to understand where do you know where. But the processes have their own limitations as well. So one of the best ways to run this is to divide HR into two parts. One is the operations HR, or many people call them administrative, but don't think that they're boring because that's the backbone. So administrative HR, or operations HR, like typical HR services, e-services, or you outsource, but that is the backbone. That is the backbone. The second one is strategic HR. So run HR like a business. So you have the strategic HR, and you have the operations HR. And trust me, there are very few people who are good in operations HR, are good in strategic HR, and those who are good in strategic HR are good in operations HR. So they're different kind of people. They're different kind of people. But you need to, under, as you go up, you need to understand both. Both are adding value. And the innovation will happen in both. The innovation will happen both, as well, your, your, your strategic HR as well as your innovative HR, your, your operations HR. Right? So, my last submission, you've been very unkind and, and you're betraying me. So, so, my last submission is think outside in. The only mantra I would like to leave behind is think outside in. Whether it is HR, whether it is marketing, whether it is finance, whether it is anything. Think outside in. Stop thinking inside out. Innovation will not happen if you think inside out. Even if it happens, it will happen in silos which will have no relevance to the market. You come out with a great product, nobody wants it. You're a great innovator. You can have lots of PhDs, papers, getting invited to universities, but nobody buying that product, right? If you, as long as you're in business. If you're in academics, the whole thing is different. But if you're in business, so therefore it's very important to align, integrate, and then innovate in that order. If you don't, you are not in demand. If you don't, you will not be selling either product or your own sales. So question to you is forget about the industry, forget about the organization. Are you, as an individual, as a professional, thinking outside in? Or you want to do something? Now, there are different theories. But if you want to do business, if you want to sell things, you want to think of outside in and not inside. So she has betrayed me very badly because I have taken about 40 minutes and suddenly when I looked at the watch I said it was 40 minutes. Sir, we were enjoying that's why I didn't want to interrupt you. So she has taken the responsibility of everybody, we, right? So, so that's a very outside in perspective, yeah? But that's the only mantra that I would like to leave behind you. So five minutes, if you have time, any questions, glad to respond. I didn't say they do not change. I said these four people are HR processes. So the areas will not change. People area, you're dealing with HR. I'm talking HR. People area is not going to change. Right? People have to be recruited. Actually, I was, I was mindful of the time. So if I explain this, people have to be recruited. They will come in. They need to be trained. They need to be developed. They need to be grown. And they need to be made leaders. Or they need to be asked to go if they're not fitting. So this entire process, doesn't change, right? How will you do it will change. But the people area doesn't change. The workforce area does not change. How will the work be divided? How will the work be allocated? How will the work be allocated in a manner that the best is taken out of you and you are you are being motivated to give your best? How is whatever you produce is aligned with the individual ability and the organization ability? 
So in the whole outside in, the first thing is why are you doing outside in? The first answer is that because to create HR value. The second answer is, the second question that comes in is, for whom do you do it? You do it for the stakeholders and for the business context. Then the question that comes up is, what do you do to do HR outside in? So outside in, outside in, outside in. In HR, what are the three things to do HR outside in? Number one, individual ability. What's in it for me? Why are you going to do this job? Whichever company you join, the first question you could ask is WIFM. What's in it for me? Isn't it? Every time it is WIFM, WIFM, WIFM. Second, organization capability. One is individual ability, that is organizational capability. As an organization, what are you going to deliver? And the third is leadership. These are the three prime expectations from HR. They sound very different. I know actually I didn't want you to, you know, you to do to pull the rug out of your carpet. Very few people today is talking that HR is supposed to deliver these three things. Individual ability, organization capability, and leadership. That means what is the workforce that you are delivering, you are planning to deliver today, and what is the workforce you are planning to deliver tomorrow, just the seed aaj hona hai, and the variety of that seed is different from the crop that we have in this room. Trust me, you guys are now old. The next generation, have the seeds been planted, they have to be different than you. Because if you do the same things with the same people, you will get the same results. So you need to plant a different variety. And HR is responsible to search the newer variety and start planting it. And where, how will you do it? HR de departments, HR professionals, HR strategy, how you build all this together. And that is why the quality of MBA HRs are very important and that is why the important role of all these management institutes. What is the kind of HR guys you are producing? The traditional HR guys or path-breaking thinkers? Because HR has a very, very big problem of slipping into the traditional HR. Strategic HR is a different ball game. Do you have a leadership agenda in the company? Do you have a talent agenda in the company? Do you have a cultural agenda in the company? The strategic behaviors which were relevant yesterday is not relevant today. Titan is a rare brand which is constantly innovating. There are brands which have HMT is gone. So, what was relevant yesterday is not relevant today and what is relevant today will not be relevant tomorrow. So, you are gone. Have you produced the next generation? HR is a very different ball game in coming years to come. It's a very exciting thing. What are the different measures and mainly you want to know the Wait for the panel, there's a full budget panel. I, you know, I'm itching to be in all panels here, but then I can't. Right? So. Okay, thank you. Sir. The great panels, the great panels. And I'm, I'm you know, just wait to hear them. I'm sure there are very competent people talking about them. We all are doing this day in, day out. Talent management has become completely different. And unfortunately, most of the companies, 99% of the companies do talent management. Where are they? And the talent management is a very, very advanced concept today. A lot of innovation is happening in that. A lot of innovation. 30 minutes is not enough, but a lot of innovation is happening. That is the key. Talent management is the key. Innovation is not the only thing. There are a lot, lot, lot of things. In an organization atmosphere, the innovation has to be relevant. If the innovation is not relevant, it will tend to be academic. Nothing wrong in it, but it will tend to be academic. It will tend to be, you can write white papers, you can write papers, you can do many things. But it may not be relevant to the organization. Mind you one thing, in organizations, they are paying you every day and they are paying you a lot of money. Whatever you do, they expect that to benefit them. They expect that to hit the bottom line. One of the major things in HR we miss out is we might think we might do a great job. Are we hitting the bottom line? What is the connect to the bottom line? Are we talking figures? Is it tra getting translated to figures somewhere? So relevant innovation is more important. As I said in a mobile, you are saying that, oh, I've given you lots of apps. Great, but do I use those apps? Which <laughs> fund do apps are But I don't need that apps. Maybe there's another app I need it. I want to type an SMS, I want to speak the SMS, it needs to recognize my voice, I need that app. So imagine 
that innovation versus some innovation which is saying US Open golf may have ball kaise swing kar raha hai. Probably you will know. Ki waan ka temperature kya air kya hai and therefore the ball is swinging like this. So if Tiger Woods abhi agar thele ga to aisa ho ga. Do you need the rest? Yes. Maybe yes. yes. I don't know. <laughs> so, so innovation needs to be done. The question is if I restrict myself to innovation in HR, the answers will be a little different. And if I if I say innovation as such, innovation per se, the answer will be different. Because innovation per se is driving companies. The driving companies which were stars yesterday are dead today. Today people are not sure about after Steve Jobs, what's going to happen, Tim Cook, where is he going to take the company to? So nobody knows the answer. I'm not saying yes, no, what. But nobody knows the answer. On the other hand, Apple has got so much of cash reserve, it doesn't know whom to distribute how much cash. The shareholders, right? On one side. On the other side, and by the way, there is a great HR story with Apple, which very few people know because Apple generally is never known to be to be doing a lot of HR. But there was a lot of HR. But I can see the panelists already come and so I'll wrap it up. To answer your question, sir, HR innovation, I'm being a little cautious. I'm saying yes, we need a lot of innovation in HR. And I am I mean, my personal perspective, I'm putting my bet on HR innovation more on outside in kind of a stuff. That's why the place where HR has been disconnected to business for a long time. And if we do not connect to business closer, if we do not walk to business closer, if we do not give value to business uh, at the fastest, we will become more and more you know, irrelevant. We will not have a seat at the table. Not very many HR heads are today board members. There are. Ram Kumar is a board member. There's so many. There's so many. But not very many. Not very many. We are still being seen, okay. How many HR heads are becoming CEO? It's still a question mark. <laughs> Very few. You will you, you, you say this name, this name, this name. Eight, two, three. Or when we go to the detail, mein to, you will have more facts about them. If you see Jindal's, Jindal's uh, managing director, Mr. Mohan, he is. He has come from the HR background, but is he really an HR person? Our, our Santanuk Mishra sir. Today he, he is there. But how many? The question is how many? So therefore, I'm being a little cautious when I'm saying innovation in HR to make it relevant, make it relevant, make it relevant, have an outside it. But the same concept, if I say for the industry, you've got to be a very different. It's an animal. It's a different model. Then I will not say any, any you know, that it's a very different. I have a slightly different take on that, if I may. Sure. sure. Uh, this is, uh, yes, what you are saying, uh, data-wise, that's right. But then we also need to look at the fact that if a company has to, you know, uh, market, forget the world for the moment, in India only, we have 36, 37, you know, states and unit, union territories. So in their marketing sales, the workforce has to be minimum 100, even at, you know, 3 per state or something. Now in the very same company, how many people will be there in HR? Maybe one. So it is a 1 is to 100 ratio. So the CEO also, if there is one HR person amongst 100, I think the ratio is maintained. <laughs> so it's a, it, it, I, I don't think that you know we can really calculate it and what to go back. It depends how you look at it. But my statistics is very simple. Tell me how many HR heads have become CEOs. I still repeat it. Because I would not like to, like for example, if I give an army example, there are, there are uh, lakhs of Jawans and there are 10,000 officers. So if I say that how many Jawans become a general, probably that may not be the right theory of probability. The theory of probability will be how many officers and one of probability of one officer to become a general. That same sales force, when they get promoted and come to a level where it's an apple to apple, I, I fully agree with you. I fully agree with you. But probably another way to look at it is when you take all the managers, for example, and then you see how many managers HR, how many managers marketing, how many managers sales, how many managers this thing, and then you take it, take the cut from there. Probably you there's another way to look at it. But anyway, I leave it to you. I mean, the, the statistics and all of you to because the whole idea is for you to understand. Just because they, they, that HR heads, if 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 they have to become CEOs, if you move closer to business, and today there is a huge huge gap. Between HR heads understanding of business. Yeah, you start is correct. You start is absolutely So, but I leave it to your thinking. These are all th you know, thoughts I'm just trying to apply. Yeah? So, thank you very much and uh, thank you for your attention.